there's no question that RC Four Wheel Drive's flagship 10th scale crawler is the Trail Finder 2. It's known for full metal axles, a leaf sprung suspension, and man, those bodies. Seriously though, it's a fantastic looking scale truck that might not have quite as much performance as others right out of the box. So how did RC Four Wheel Drive do on their 124th scale TF2? Let's see what's in this box. Well, there's no getting around it. Of course, we went with a blue body. Looking on the artwork here, one thing I noticed is that 2S LiPo, it's not LiPo, it's ICR batteries that's got cobalt. Couple of highlights on the box. Art. Some factory sealed giant stickers. I'm guessing this is the boxes that you nope. We're gonna, we're gonna open it right up almost. Man, sometimes these stickers make things hard to get into. Adult proofing. Oh, it's like eight seconds. So, I mean, very nice packaging, right? I don't know how many of you actually care and want to retain the packaging, but this does look very nice. If not difficult to suck out of the box. I will also point out that, you know, some of the other vehicles that we, we got had, I think, a scale garage in there. This looks like it's got a scale log cabin. Take some log cabin shots. I'm, we'll see. I'm assuming what's in here is going to be our radio. And our, why did I open this small thing? <laughs> our radio, batteries, charger, all that good stuff. Yep. That's a kint for those of you that do some 3D printing. This remote, I will say, looks incredibly. Plasticky and cheap. I'm sure it works fine, but compared to, man, even some of the other cheap remotes, this one looks exceedingly cheap. Phillips head to undo the battery cover, I'm guessing. So is, yep. I'm going to take the double A's. Feels okay. I mean, it's comfortable in my hand, and for something of this size, having some super fancy remote control. I mean, I'm not expecting this to be, you know, 7px. Or... It is what it is. XR2 channel. We've got a bind button. Oh, suspects. I turn it on and off. You can... This looks like an additional motor. And one thing I did notice was that we have this sticker on the front of the box. Ours says, limited time includes extra high power motor. But I don't know why it includes an extra high power motor, but I guess we'll get into that once we start driving these things later this week. Standard USB charger, super special. You have some some spare, I guess, mirror, side view mirror. It's pretty nice. Our 2S ICR battery. Manual. So, uh, helpful information that I'm not going to look at yet. And of course, stickers if you check yours out. Lastly, from there, some sealed double A's. So nice that it does come with batteries for the remote. So I may not give them the most amount of points for having the nicest remote, but it feels okay. And it pulled off. Velcro? Velcro. That's okay. Interesting plasticky little insert. I guess you could, I don't know what you could do. You can do whatever you want with that. I'm going to do nothing with it. 
Uh, so it appears that this is Velcro, and kind of like we had on the MSA-1, our Velcro on the back may have been the front on the MSA-1, but has just come off of the body. Rather than try to stick, let's see, I'm, I do see a body clip. I, I have not looked ahead of time to see how these are supposed to go together. Or so I don't know exactly what's going on here, but looks like I am short one body clip. Maybe there's a spare one in there. And we have one in here. Probably going to be fairly easy. And if this does come off like mine did, you can see they've kind of got some little standoffs on here to help you line this up. That's actually really nice. So what I thought was Velcro in the back is not Velcro, that's double-sided tape. So what I will do is eventually I will just hot glue this down, CA glue, whatever. So fairly nice little hidden body clip system in the back. It actually looks like we're supposed to have the same thing in the front. I'm a little confused with this one. Maybe you have the option so I'm seeing kind of in the front, I guess before I pull both these clips off, hopefully you can see this is the softer side of the Velcro. On this side, we have the crunchy side. So I guess you have the option of using this as is with the Velcro in the front. Is that an option in the back too? Maybe it is an option. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. So you get options. Well, now I just... I'm going back up a little bit. So it looks like you have the option to run this, use Velcro, or perhaps you can just glue this down if you want to use body clips, which is what I would do because Velcro is fine, but I like body clip for body clip. I like body clip for security. Me Tarzan. Let's see how this gets in there. Yeah, go in your home. Maybe if I line up the hole, that would that benefit everything? How you guys think? I'm just trying to get this body clip back in there. So, so what I will do is eventually I will pull the Velcro off front and rear and glue these into the body. That's just what I prefer. You do what you want because I don't know America. I don't see any extra body clips. There is extra bits of Velcro in here. Okay, so now that's all about. Missing one body clip. Mount somewhere. I doubt it. Damn it. Well, that's okay. Let's move on to the important things here, right? So we will get this put back in place as best as we can. Maybe I have to do the front first. Have to. Advised. Well, I gotta tell you, I mean, there's no. Go in mud play right now. Jeez, why will this not go in? What am I doing wrong? I have to take this off. This may be some sort of known issue that people have. I don't know. Just or tear it up, you know. Uh, I have not done any sort of research on these trucks before unboxing this because I don't ever like to ruin surprises for myself. Okay, that's just a nice tight fit. I mean, they did a good job making that fit correctly. Once I get the body clips in there, we'll be in good shape. I need to center, center stage here. So some of the obvious things that I notice is uh, not 
not an overabundance of movement in here. We've got a four link double triangulated front and rear springy suspension. Uh, like the other trucks, there is not any oil in these shocks, although, as Eric mentioned, that, oh gosh, what was it? FCX24, you can fill the shocks with oil. We've got some sort of bracket back here that you could, I guess, the trailer hitch to. Nice. The servo saver on this servo. That's good or bad. The servo arm, interestingly enough, can you see that in there? Uh, it looks like they just nipped it square. I mean, if it works, it works. It doesn't matter. It's just different. And that's fine. We've got, you know, looks like a pretty good amount of throw in here. Ooh, you have the, just the tiniest little. That's nice. All of the links and everything, of course, are what looks like nylon impregnated plastic, what you call it. Uh, skid plate feels pretty smooth. These are pretty long. I would say that these are the shortest little shocks that I, I think they could have gotten in there. Uh, because of that, you're just not going to get a whole lot of. Well, we'll see how it does on the RTI ramp, but I'm guessing that's about an inch that it can air out a tire, which for a coil sprung suspension, not fantastic. But again, we'll see how it compares. I will also I notice, oh wow, plasticky servo, and that's, that's fine for what it is. I wonder if maybe they could have mounted that servo a little bit higher. Looks like we get a little bit of possible appearance of really close with that tie rod. There will be, of course, the very smallest amount of bump steer because this is a double triangular four link up front and servo is chassis mount. Does it really matter at this scale? I'm doubting. Overall, I mean, nice. Nice ground clearance on the sides, right? Body sits up pretty high, but not so high that you can see daylight between the chassis and the body, the belly. I like that. I don't like it when I can see daylight in here that makes it look like you've got a six inch body lift. Uh, there does, let's get this body off. I do see, I guess, before I take the body off, it does look like we've got some ports, buckets, whatever you want to call it, for headlights. Not sure about the fog lights. Don't see a way to add tail lights, but hey, you guys are creative. You'll come up with something. You might come up with something. Let's see. This is de velcroing now. Wow, I don't even have the body clips in here. <laughs> and it's. Uh, it's fine. Nothing wrong. So I definitely see multiple options for mounting the shocks in the rear. So you could play with perhaps how much articulation you're getting in the rear. In the front, it's a different story. Uh, you really have what looks like the scaled down version of the F2 shock loops, which are generally replaced pretty quickly. As far as the scale realism on the axles, I mean, the diff cover looks legit. Having the shocks mount to the knuckles, well, you know, I mean, at this scale, well, I can't complain about this. For this scale, this looks fantastic. Who am I kidding? I couldn't tell you what the knuckles look like. These obviously are real beadlocks, which is no surprise coming from five. And another thing you'll notice is some super, everyone's favorite, super teeny tiny scale hardware. A little bit of slop drivetrain. Come on. What, what do you want? I'm guessing our battery is going to go back here. I'm also guessing somehow people will figure out a way to move it up here or down here. 
uh, which is something that definitely would God, it almost looks like you could just oh hey right off the bat this will focus you can see that there are hey camera get with the program there are some marks on here steel base I don't think they had to put numbers on it yes see they're coming out with some different bodies I can make holes speaking of of but definitely a metal chassis fire frame nylon impregnated spacers thing and transmission looks like it's mounted pretty low for what it is now complain about you know hey well the engine's mounted up really high and oh i mean look this engine's so tiny right. is it gonna matter i mean i guess at this scale it could matter sure maybe they could have clocked the motor over and down a little bit most on 10 scale trucks does it matter i don't know looks like we've got eight degree steering knuckles in the back shot Nice diff cover, look a little bit out of place just because of large screws are for the lockouts. I would have loved to have seen just something else there. I don't know. Maybe put the screws in from the front so it could be pointed a little more in the back. That would kind of mask it a little. But all in all, can't complain. Well, I guess I can complain. That's why we're here, is to complain. Uh, receiver ESC. You get one port. Uh, there is an extra JST plug on here. What that's for? We'll have to look in the instructions to see. Uh, as far as the body goes, like I said, absolutely there are some buckets for headlights. Interior is screwed in place. I mean, half interior. And for me in the U.S., of course, the steering wheel is on the side. But what was I thinking? Someone, I'm sure, will 3D print one that has the correct side because America. Of course, at that point, I guess you'll have to flip around. Doesn't look like it would be too difficult. There is an extra hole on the knuckle right here if you try to reverse everything. It'd actually be pretty easy to do. I have to um, Americafy this. I don't know. I'm going to go take a look at the instructions really quickly. See if we can figure out what that JST plug is for. Oh, you know what? The joke's on me. I didn't even open the manual. I picked up the manual. I sat it down right here because I was going to go look and see what the JST plug is for. How brain dead am I today? Hey, Patrick, maybe that's where you plug the battery in. Oh, oh my. I just can't even. Just can't. I went and grabbed some of our other 24th scale pickup truck crawlers compared to the elements you can see the tires on TF2 are just a lot smaller. The wheelbase is close with the advantage if you wheelbase going to the elements. I have the SCX10, the SCX10. Wow, the SCX24 next. Now, although these are both 24th scale crawlers, and that Yoda is tiny by comparison. I know in real life this truck would be smaller than this one, so not knocking either truck. But there it is. I would say that this SCX24 body on F2 would just dwarf it. These are, wow, I just can't get over how tiny. And then, of course, you know, the biggest 24th scale crawler that we have, FMS, just, you know, that's obviously someone's life. Of course, with this truck, you're going to have a really nice approach angle for breakover, 
given the size of the tires and the wheelbase, may not be so great. Departure angle. I am kind of just eyeballing this. Uh, I'm going to guess that when we do a comparison of all trucks, this one out of the box is going to have the worst departure angle. I could be wrong. I think that CR24, the back tire, maybe stuck out a little. Uh, but we'll see. But I just wanted to put some of these side by side for you guys so that if you have one of these other trucks, you'll kind of have an idea. So, how do I think RC four wheel drive did with their 124th scale TF2? Well, I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful. Tailgate handle, tail lights, rear blinker, front blinker, mirrors, door handles, interior. This truck, just everything up here, just the rest, just, no. No, they can go outside and play hide and go F themselves, right? This truck is by far the most scale truck out of any of the 24th scale trucks we've looked at. Said that, there may be some slight performance issues. I mean, there is a pretty big departure angle here, but that's just due to the scale nature of the truck. The articulation is, well, ah, I don't know where the articulation is, but it's not in this truck. I don't think the lack of performance, however, would impact your joy of ownership. I think if you and a friend both went out, bought these trucks, you'd have a great time driving them and modifying them, increasing the performance. I also think that there will be a ton of aftermarket and tinkerer type 3D print at home solutions for this truck. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, don't let the perceived lack of performance stop you from buying it. Because in the long run, I don't think it's going to matter. Having said all of that, I am very interested to see how this truck does when we start doing our shootout next week with all of our other 24th scale trucks. We're going to take six trucks, we're going to put them head to head in all sorts of ridiculous tests that we can come up with, and we're going to show you guys the results. That's all the time I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. Not sure if you want to subscribe yet? Check out one of these videos. Thank you for watching.